Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is my walkthrough for Chapter 1 of the Level 1 Sisters of EVE epic arc, The Bloodstained Stars, as refilmed for the Creus release. Uh, today is Saturday, August the 9th, 2014. Uh, just a small number of things that I forgot to cover in the previous episode. Um, I decided to get roughly 200 cubic meters of ammunition. Having done some mathematics and looking at uh, the refire times on my guns, my uh, my launchers, uh, as well as the capacity of the launchers and the size of the individual charges, uh, I calculated approximately uh, how much of each kind of ammunition I would want to carry uh, in order to run out of both types at approximately the same time. Firing, assuming that I was firing all weapons uh, continuously. Uh, so, as it turns out, about 200 cubic meters of ammunition will last me about 10 hours of continuous fire, which should be more than enough. It is about a million interstellar credits worth of ammunition, and I only have uh, 2.9 million interstellar credits remaining, so I'm not get a going to carry my entire ammunition load with me at all times. Uh, there's a mission in Chapter 6 where the agent will give you a civilian relic analyzer because you're going to need one, but a real, honest-to-goodness relic analyzer uh, will also work and will work better. So bring a relic analyzer with you. Uh, I'm, I've also brought salvagers with me. In between recordings of episodes, I will be salvaging all the various wrecks uh, just to get a good measure of how much stuff I can get out of the salvage. Uh, I have decided to drop the stasis webifier and instead dual prop, so I will have a micro warp drive and an afterburner on my ship. I cannot use both of these modules at the same time. While the afterburner is running, the micro warp drive cannot be activated. While the micro warp drive is active, the afterburner cannot be activated. I have to deactivate one before I can activate the other. But they're useful for different situations. Uh, the micro warp drive covers distance really quickly, but is going to make me about the size of a battleship. So I could take a huge amount of damage if I am careless with it. Uh, the afterburner, however, only gives me a more modest speed boost, but it does not increase my size at all. So I'm still only the size of a destroyer, but going twice as fast. Or almost twice as fast at any rate. Uh, aside from that, I don't think there are any other points I forgot to cover, so let's actually get started. So I am in Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau, and I'm going to talk to Sister Alatura. Uh, here, I ask for help, and they send me a Capsuleer. You are a Capsuleer, aren't you? An immortal pilot who subverts the rules of life and death, who shapes the fate of empires? You'll have to excuse my skepticism. Um, you can read the rest of the text at your own leisure. Uh, basically, it's approach the wrecked ships, and this is a Minarch. So set destination, and let's close. Let's see how good my instant on dock bookmark is. Warp drive active. Reasonably okay. I had to veer slightly to the left, but I was still aligned. Warp drive active. Let's see, move drones into a new group, light explosive, and hornets, new group, light kinetic. A beacon beckons. Warp to location. Warp drive active. Now 
Now, in chapter one, I vaguely remember that in some missions I will be shooting either Blood Raider pirates and or rogue drones. In either case, I want to do mostly EM damage. Nothing for this mission, though. There's no hostiles here. If you can't figure out where these things are, you can add a tab. I like to call it navigation. And load default all. And there's the damsel wreckage. Complete remotely. Most missions cannot be completed remotely. This one can. Seems Concord was faster to respond. Um, let's request the next mission. Let's talk to Tevis Jack. And since he's only one jump away, you can right-click and jump through Stargate. Accept remotely, and close. Tevis Jack is an agent in space. Some agents in space will not talk to you most of the time because they're part of epic arcs like this one, so you have to actually start at the starting point of the arc. Other agents in space are what are called Cosmos agents, and they provide rather difficult missions. Uh, I don't know too much about the Cosmos missions, so I don't advise touching them unless you uh, do your research. Uh, but right-click on this ship. No, that can't be correct. Hold on, let me t use the look at function. Ah, there's his Iteron. So right-click the Iteron and start conversation. And he wants you to get a data core. And you know what? Hold on. Let me right click this guy, add agents in space to overview. That might make this a little easier. Seamus default, yes. Alright, eliminating any pirates and. Alright, so return to Monarch, set destination, right click tar, add waypoint. Let's get going. By the way, you'll notice that I'm probably skipping ahead a little bit. You know how to set courses. You know how to jump through Stargates. I'm not going to waste your time. Right click. Uh, warp to location. Warp drive active. And actually, let me double check the mission. Uh, okay, so I don't know what kind of pirates these are. Uh, there's no faction icon next to the location link. Corpy. Okay, that means Blood Raiders. That's why I thought. Wasn't sure. Uh, let's target lock and drag out the thermal drones and approach and tap the micro warp drive. Right click. There we go, engage target. And right click. Ah, the drones are set to aggressive. Uh, let me also tell them to focus fire so they're all shooting the same thing at any given moment. Uh, I've. St and I'm target locking these guys, but the, since the drones are on aggressive, they're taking care of it on their own. Personally, though, I have a habit of 
uh, telling them to engage target. Let me also save a location, because I'm going to come back here later and salvage. Uh, yeah, generally, I usually keep my drones on passive, uh, but I forgot to set uh, shortcut hotkeys to control the drones with. Bay. Could use the afterburner to get a little closer. A micro warp drive would just overshoot. All right, return to Tar. Warp drive active. And the fact that I forgot to set new drone shortcuts. All right, right click, edit, set that. Oh, right. And it's set that to F9. There, I think that's correct. Alright, my shortcuts should now be set. All right, here is Tevis Jack. Right click, start conversation. Complete the mission, request the next mission. Uh, retrieve red, and that will be here in Tar. So we can just warp to location. Warp drive active. By the way, I trained up Drone Avionics level 2, so I can send my drones to attack things up to 30 kilometers away. And now that I have hotkeys, I'm going to set these to passive. One of the things that some older players, some, not all, older players like to do is... Uh, trick newbies into shooting them first. So they'll probably steal some of your loot or some such thing. Which makes them go suspect. You shoot them, which starts limited engagement. And then they can shoot back at you and destroy your ship. If your drones are set to aggressive, they might attack suspect players on their own. Or they might attack players who have shot at your mobile tractor unit, or who have shot at your mobile depot. So, generally speaking, you want to keep your drones on passive and learn how to control them by hotkeys and by dragging groups of drones out from the drone control window into space, like that. There's red. Let's warp back to Tevis Jack. This is a, a corpse of a man wearing a red shirt. It looks like he was a pretty tough guy just a few hours ago. Could 
complete the mission. And he wants you to return to Arnon. Again, you know how to jump through Stargates. Just don't use the autopilot to actually fly your ship because you drop out of warp 15 kilometers short of the gate. I'm going to skip ahead. Alright, when an agent gives you a mission to talk to another agent, you complete the previous mission by talking to the next agent. Jet canning a janitor. Accept. Close, undock. Serpentis. So generally you want to use thermal or kinetic damage. Blood Raiders and Rogue Drones, you want to use EM or thermal damage. Preferably EM if you can. But with Serpentis, uh, you want to use typically thermal or kinetic. As each target dies, I'm just pressing my all drones engage hotkey to send them off to the next target. Yeah, I know where the ship's cook was headed, but I'll need a uh, terminal to give you the coordinates. A terminal in a safe station. I'm not stupid. To my cuddle bookmark. Warp drive active. And actually, I should be more specific since there's multiple stations here. Cuddle 0903, Sisters of Eve. Hold D, click once, let go of D. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, complete the mission. Request the next mission. And we are going to rescue a chef. Warp 
warp drive active. He needs a rescue. So I'm going to use the micro warp drive to cover the distance quickly. And two cycles should be enough. If I run it for a third cycle, I'll likely overshoot the target. If you want to. You can kill the rogue drones. It's not necessary. But if you're interested in loot and salvage, could be worthwhile. having my weapons shoot one target while the drones deal with another. Warp drive active. I started warp, then told my drones to return to the drone bay. Thankfully, I had enough time for the drones to return because my ship wasn't aligned. I almost accidentally left my drones behind. It's one of the good things of having hotkeys for your drones. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, for delivering a doctor, uh, you, you're you given an item called a lot, of, a lot of Money. Make sure it's in your cargo hold, otherwise you cannot complete this mission. Warp drive active. When trying to right-click to bring up my bookmarks, I have to make sure I'm right-clicking an empty space. In the split second when I've just undocked from a station, the station doesn't render on my client right away, so I can just right-click anywhere on the background to bring up the regular empty space context menu. As soon as the station renders, however, if I try to right-click on it, it thinks I'm right-clicking the station, and rightly so. And it gives me the context menu for the station. Alright, there's the dead drop. If it's missing from your overview for whatever reason, it's of type mission container. Um, I think it's an entity. You'll have to find... I could be wrong. You'll have to find it in your... Um, 
in your filters. And I overshot the target slightly. So, with your cargo hold and with the dead drop open, put in a lot of money. That worked out well. I wonder how much cash we can get if we kill you and keep the doctor. Yeah. I'm thinking no. Hornets or hobgoblins will work against Serpentis. <clears throat> There's the doctor. Let's return to our cuddle bookmark. Warp drive active. Of course, for Serpentis, I should have switched to um, Inferno or Scourge rockets and face plasma ammunition. But these are just weak frigate, weak frigates, so it doesn't matter too much. Some targets have rather high resistances, and it's kind of important to Docking use the correct ammunition. Engineering a rescue. Nope, I right-click the station. Uh, right-click empty space. Uh, undock warp. Warp drive active. Warp drive active. Get me out of here, this thing might explode any second now. I don't think it's actually scripted to do that, but um, you do want to get her out of there. And for rogue drones, you want to use hobgoblins or acolytes. On the heartbreak, loot all. Oh, more rogue drones. Okay. You don't have to kill these, uh, but if you want the um, if you want the bounties and loot, it might be a good idea. So 
tell the drones to return. Warp and let's warp. Active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. And the next mission is to talk to a Glente agent in Harergat. This will transition you from Chapter 1 to Chapter 2. Uh, I'm going to end the recording here and start salvaging all of those wrecks that I bookmarked. And in the next episode, I will already be in Herergit. You know how to set a destination. You know how to jump through Stargates. Uh, so until, until episode two, thank you for watching. <laughs>